what is going on guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to be talking about a topic which is super common in interviews it's something that a lot of folks often struggle with and that is a struct versus a class so this is something like i mentioned comes up uh, in interviews quite a bit and it's not too difficult uh, of a uh, discernment between the two, but let's do some examples. We'll talk about some real world usage and all that good stuff. Don't forget to smash that like button before we get started, hit subscribe while you're at it, and let's jump into it by creating a playground. So we'll open up Xcode like we have here and we will get started with a playground. We're gonna stick with a blank playground and I'm gonna go ahead and call this struct versus class. Go ahead and save it and hopefully Xcode decides to load. There it goes, perfect. And let me uh, expand this. We don't need the simulator. Let me expand the window a little bit to give ourselves some more room to work. And let's get rid of this string. Let me actually bump the font size a little bit for everybody and let's get into it. So I'm sure you've seen as you've been kind of learning iOS and Swift that you can represent objects in either a struct or a class. So let's say you have a person and you create it as a class. A person might have a first name property as a string, similarly a last name as a string, maybe an age, and we'll stick with that. Now we can also copy and paste this right below and change the keyword to be a struct. And the question arises of what is the difference? Well, the first difference is if we give this a second, well, let's first change the name so it doesn't complain that they're named the same. Uh, the first difference is the class will give you an error that it doesn't have an initializer, whereas the struct does not. So this is one of the kind of nitty gritty details. So what this is basically complaining about is that because these are all constant properties that need to be initialized, you need to give it an, an, an initializer and it should ideally take in all of those properties and basically you can now uh, construct this class and assign them. So we're gonna say uh, first name equals first name, last name equals last name, equals last name, and age equals age. So that actually isn't the core difference. That's just one of the little nuances. The core difference about classes versus structs is passing by reference type and value type. So this is where it gets into a bit of a computer science-y topic. Structs are passed by value, where classes are passed by reference. So what does that mean? So let's do an example to take a look at it. So let's say we create a person, and we'll call it a struct. I guess we can't do that. Let's call it underscore struct, so it doesn't complain. We'll say this is a person struct. So we're gonna assign this. I can spell today. We're gonna assign this to a person struct. You can open up the constructor and you can notice that it gives us what we want. We don't need to put the initializer here. So we're just gonna say a, b, 12, and then let's make this 14. This one is just gonna be person, which will be uh, the class. I'm just gonna underscore a class so we know the difference. And we can keep the same stuff. So what do you guys think happens when you create another person and say this equals class. What's actually going on is this property that you have created is now equal not to the value of class, but a reference of class in memory. So when you go ahead and you update uh, class.firstName to something else, and we would need to change first name to be a var on here to make it mutable, that actually goes ahead and updates it on the reference of the original class. However, if you go ahead and change this another person to a uh, copy of a struct, rather if you assign it to a struct, what it's actually doing, I kind of alluded to it already, is it's copying the value of it and creating another struct. So if you come in here now and change the first name again, this time for the struct, and we're gonna again make this a var so it's mutable. The original value of struct.firstName will stay as a, but the another person.firstName will be abc. So the core difference, difference to really pick up on here, the takeaway is uh, in interview questions, 
a struct is passed by value, a class is passed by reference. So that kind of brings us to the question of why do we care, which one is better, when to use which one, right? So when to use one or the other is a bit of a subjective argument and it kind of always has been. Generally, the rule of thumb with most iOS dev is if you have something that is really dependent on the value of the data, you probably want to use a value type, aka a struct. So an, an example of that would be a model or a view model. So if you're familiar with MVC or MVVM, any of the coding patterns, if you have any data that is driving a view, like a view model or some presentation, then let's say we're building the Facebook app and we have a uh, Facebook post view model. And let's say for hypothetical purposes, there is a like count on here and we'll make it a var so it's mutable. And let's say we construct it and we pass in 12. Every time that the model changes, we want to trigger uh, some type of view update, presumably, right? So this is how on the feed, you can actually go ahead and uh, see those live updates. This would be an appropriate usage of a view model. Now this is not to say, let's see what this is complaining. Let's A, this should be a var. Uh, this is not to say you can't use a class for your model. However, a class would be a bit of a heavy handed usage of a class, right? There's no really benefit for us having this be a reference type. If anything, it gives us kind of issues because if we pass around and try to copy, uh, it, copy a reference, an instantiated reference of it, or an instantiated instance, I should say, not, not really a reference, it becomes problematic because we're not actually pointing to a copy of it, but pointing to the original reference. So next takeaway, view models and models, superb uses for structs and uh, structs and just data type value based models that really don't need the reference type bit of it. Uh, let's see what else. So the other thing that you should know about structs and classes in terms of what makes them similar and different is uh, both of them can conform to protocols. So here we can have this conform to Hashable as well as this class conform to Hashable. So pretty simple in that regard, they basically do the same thing. This is gonna start complaining because we don't actually conform to it. So we need to actually add this here and I'm just gonna return true. We're not gonna implement this. I've got a separate video on Hashable if you wanna learn more about that. The other thing which is similar between both of these types is that they can both have functions and they are truly uh, full blown functions and you can basically throw them in both a class or a struct. So in a lot of other languages, classes and structs have inherent limitations where structs are a lot more dumbed down. In Swift, not really, uh, not really the case. Uh, also, both, of, uh, both structs and classes can have computed properties. So let's say we have uh, is ready, which is gonna return a bool. We can say, we can do some if condition in here and based on that we can return something. We'll just return true for now. We can also put this in a struct and return false. And that is also completely valid and good to go. So other than that, uh, that's about it. Personally, my preference if anyone cares is I like to use structs where I can. Uh, one part of that reason is I don't have to put an initializer and lazy me likes to cut that corner. It's not incorrect. If anything, it uh, makes your code simpler. Uh, I'm sure you've also seen in a lot of uh, frameworks, Apple themselves really pushes using structs. And if you're even more curious about the way it's used internally at Apple, uh, Swift UI is heavily built on structs. So in Swift UI, for those of you who are familiar with it, uh, every single view that you can create in a very simple way is nothing more than a very generic struct and they call it view. And that's why Apple with Swift UI severely encourages creating uh, as many views as you want. Whereas traditionally all, all of us iOS devs really kind of uh, make a face at having huge view hierarchies because it just becomes difficult to maintain. But Apple is turning around and saying, hey, don't worry about it. Structs are super lightweight go ahead and create as many duplicate views as you want. We'll make sure we can handle everything for you. And the reason they can do that in such an elegant way is that they're all value typed and backed by a struct. So that's where I'll wrap up the video. Pretty straightforward concept, yet pretty important. Definitely an interview question uh, at 
even senior level, they might throw this at you in some way, shape, or form. So definitely make sure you understand this. If you haven't destroyed that like button already, make sure to do so with the YouTube algorithm. Hit subscribe while you're at it. If you've got a question or anything, throw it down in the comments. Happy to hear from you guys as always. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.